Okay, so yesterday uh, I posted a video about the Exodus, and my main point in it was just to show that there is um, there is evidence to support uh, the Exodus happening. Um, and one of the things I did is I just kind of briefly skimmed over the whole idea of dating it. And the reason why I did that is because I didn't really feel it was the time or the place to look real in-depth at that. So in this video, I want to look a little bit more at the, at the specifics of when did the excess happen and how do we get to that date. Now, if you'll remember in the last video, I talked about um, the way that some people try and put it to um, the Ramses dynasty in the 1200s BC, um, and I said that's not what the Bible says, and there's really not enough proof um, of that. You have to look at it as there's no underlying, there's no uh, existing data to support it. You also have to look at a few. Well, that views is obviously has a lot of followers, like. Kenneth Kitchen, I mean, obviously a very respected uh, scholar, but I just don't really see that it, without going point by point through through the theory, I, I don't really feel like it addresses all the issues. Um, and But that leaves us with the traditional dating, which is 1446 uh, BC, which I think is in the area, but I think it tries to be too precise. And what I mean by that is... In ancient history, you really can't be too dogmatic about specific dates. Just because it, ancient history isn't precise. And there's a lot of people who don't understand history, and so they make real big, broad claims about for certain what happened. But there's just a slew of problems. You know, some archaeology, for instance, can't date things precisely, and it relies on things like broken pot pottery shards. Uh, you know, then you've got history. Well, historical accounts can't be dated too precisely, and adding up the dates doesn't really help very much either, because in the case of the Bible, for instance, the Bible did not try to give a precise dating of the entire history of the world. Some people have tried to make it say that, but it never said that. Um, some people, for instance, have tried to date the world to 4000 BC based off the Bible. Well, if the Bible wasn't intending to give a full, complete history of all the world, well, then there's no reason to assume <laughs> that the world was created in 4000 BC. Y you can't expect the Bible to say things that it doesn't say. And so when you're looking at ancient history, you have to look at it for what it's actually saying. And you have to remember that people didn't write back then how they write now. So that takes us to the issue. 1 Kings 6 1 says that it. Um, that Solomon built the temple, uh, you know, it was his fourth year, um, it was 480 years after um, after the Israelites left Egypt in the Exodus. Well, the problem is, is that date exact, how we would write it today, or is it a rounded number? Um, or is it a um, not metaphorical, but um, symbolic number. See, ancient people had ways of writing that we sometimes have a hard time understanding. And because we don't understand it, oftentimes people say, oh, so either the Bible is wrong or you're trying to say that the Bible is wrong. Well, no to either of those things. You have to just take into, ac into account that people back then didn't write how we do now. First off, the biggest issue is that the book, if you add the dates up from the book of Judges, for instance, we arrive at a different date then is possible if you read um, on the reliability of the Old Testament by Kenneth Kitchen he kind of breaks down that that point um, and it doesn't really seem like the Israelites kept tabs of the dates from the Exodus through to uh, the start of their monarchy so where did they get this date from we're left with a big gap in understanding that and because we can't go back and ask them, you know, uh, the specifics, it's hard to know. Now, was it exactly 480 years? Usually, numbers in the Bible are rounded, um, especially when they're when they're perfect numbers. It's 480 years, exactly, not 481, not 479, 480. So, was it really that perfect and even of a number, or are they rounding? 
or once again, is it the symbolic? It's just it's meant to show for the period of time. When we read history nowadays, we want everything to be exact, but they didn't write things back then like that. So if Solomon built the temple around 970, somewhere, don't, once again, don't be too precise and dogmatic about this, then that would mean that the Exodus was sometime around 1445. That's where the traditional view comes from. Now, the people who hold to the 1200, to, to the Exodus in the 1200, date it mostly because um, the Bible mentions Ramses. Now, I already, I already looked at that in the previous lessons I'm not, or video, so I'm not really going to talk on that too much. But the, the point that I'm trying to make here is the entire theory that the Exodus happened in 1446, 1445, um, is based off the idea that 1 Kings 6 1 is precise. Now, we know that the Bible is oftentimes not precise with dates. So, with that knowledge, would it be wise to assume that this one date, the only place in the Bible that it gives us a clue as to how much time has elapsed between the Exodus and Solomon's reign, the only place in the Bible, would it be wise to push that into such a dogmatic mold to say if the Exodus for sure happened in 1446? Well, I don't think so because I've read a lot of ancient history a lot of ancient, uh, you know, steles and stuff, and uh, documents and stuff, and, and things just aren't normally that precise. And I'm concerned that people are trying to make the Bible give up a date that it's not saying. Now, I'm not even going to look at the issues of the calendars and that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll just move on, on past all that. So if, if we know that the numbers often are not precise, and I could give just so many examples of this, um, we can safely say it happens sometime around 1450. Okay, well that gives us a little bit more leeway. Let's let's look at something in that general time frame. So when we say, okay, if the numbers aren't exact, is exact and it's saying sometime around 1450, all right? So we look around for uh, evidence that supports the claim. Now, if you watched my previous video about um, proof of the Exodus, you'll know that I pinpoint this to the reign of Tuthmosis II, who died in about 1479. Um, with the marks that the Bible describes. Okay, all right, so that gives us a date right around the same time. Now, is it exactly 480 years from when we've dated Solomon's, um, Solomon's reign? No, no it's not. See, and that's the issue, is that people are looking for the Bible to say something that it probably didn't mean to say. There's no reason to assume that the Bible was giving an exact date in 1 Kings 6.1. There's, there's no reason to assume that. Um, once again, I know this is hard for us in modern days to understand because we want things to be precise, but that's not how they wrote back then. Um, we really can't look for precision in ancient history, and that goes for any kind of strict dating. Um, there's just a margin of error whenever you're looking at ancient history where you have to say, probably about this time. So if we ignore history, and we ignore ancient history and just say, okay, it happened in 1445 or 1446, that's just not very smart. That's just not, not very smart. Now, am I talking about changing the date by a significant amount of time? No, we're talking about within a window of, of 30 years. That's not that big of a, of a difference. I mean, that's... <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Not only that, but let's consider a few points. Uh, the the foremost being that Egyptian chronology is it may be off in some parts by a few years, not many, not many. But there is a slight possibility that some of the pharaohs might not we might not have the order right, and we might not have the dates right. Um, for instance, how do we know that Tuthmosis II died in 1479? A lot of speculation, mostly. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of speculation. It could have been slightly later. It could have been slightly before. And then there's the issue that, you know, there's multiple views of Egyptian chronology. There's the high view and the low view and the middle view. So there's really this wide span of when the pharaoh hypothetically could have reigned. And so we have to shift through all this and then shift through ancient documents and then shift through the Bible. And you're just trying to figure out a whole picture of what's going on. And so to be too precise about any one date is not real smart. Um, 
you just have to say it's around this time. So it's around the 1450 marker. So if Tethmosis II was the pharaoh of the Egypt, as I fully believe the evidence shows, then that means the Exodus happened about 1479. So I hope that that kind of, um, kind of explains how I got to that date. Um, and I really hope that you understand what I'm saying. Uh, the, yes, the Bible is God's word. Yes, it is reliable. Um, yes, it is historical. Um, but to remove it from the culture it was written in is just not very uh, smart. See, if we were to take our the way we write and take it back into time, the ancient people would probably have a problem with how we write too. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's not how we write. <laughs> There's just you just have to see things um, from their point of view. Um, so I hope that this kind of explains um, that.